<laughs> All right. Good morning, Teach Better family. Happy Halloween. I cannot believe that the holiday has finally come together. Ray, we had a fabulous chat this morning. We had folks in costume. <laughs> it was quite enjoyable of an experience. And I don't know about you, but Halloween feels like it's been around for like two months and it's finally arrived. Yeah, I, I'm very, very excited to celebrate today. And I'm very excited for it to be over tomorrow. <laughs> I feel like my kids have been in various costumes for so long and I cannot wait for tonight. And I know they're excited and I know it's going to be about the candy and the experience of like running around the neighborhood, but I'm, I'm just kind of ready for the, the next holidays to, to come up and to be able to, you know, get the house decorated in a different way. And, and I don't know about you, but I, I think I'm ready to. Yeah. You know, I, I, forget every year. Halloween is a holiday I don't typically have a lot of excitement for, but I forget every year that leading up to Halloween has like 15 different layers. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you wear your costume to extracurricular activities and you have the, the, the weekend before the Halloween where it's not Halloween, people celebrate Halloween. And yeah, I'm ready for this to be like the last hurrah, right? Have a great yep. time. Kids are super stoked to go trick-or-treating. At least in our community, we're going trick-or-treating tonight. And then, uh, yeah, and then I'm really excited to go to bed and really excited <laughs> to wake up tomorrow, take down decorations and start focusing on Thanksgiving and yes. the winter holidays. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, we kind of started off the starter question this morning with just folks as far as remembering when they were a child and what was their favorite Halloween costume. So it was really fun to hear stories about that and also heard some solutions for folks trying to battle Halloween and learning at the same time and doing Halloween a little bit earlier, either within their city or within their school of like trying to find some boundaries so that today is really focused on instruction. I also heard some things about PD sessions happening today so that they didn't have to combat that. So um, I thought that was interesting. Yeah, or PD the following day, right? November yeah. 1 being a day that students weren't in. Um, I love this conversation. I, I really was surprised by how many communities have come together and made decisions to do things. But one of the main takeaways, I think, that came from that dialogue was the focus on it needing to be not only a school making a decision, not only a district making a decision, but an entire community coming together and making a decision. For for those of you that live in communities that have been able to do that, if nothing else, maybe a little celebration that there was some some communication and collaboration because it sounds like a, a great solution. We had a bunch of people that had different, you know, experiences over the last few days to make sure that we we're doing as much learning as possible. So I'm excited for for today, whether it's a big holiday in some communities or already had been celebrated. But I know in our house, household, uh, a few of us are headed over to the elementary school to carve pumpkins with the first graders. And, yep. you know, it, it is a cute experience. I'm just ready for it to be done. <laughs> <laughs> well, to start off our conversation, we had talked about the brand new Facebook group that we have for our admin mastermind. And it's been such a fun thing to connect with folks prior to the session or right after, you know, people putting in thoughts and resources in the space. So if you haven't joined, make sure that you go to this uh, link here for the Facebook group. And so, you know, what I posed in there, Ray, was just asking folks, hey, what do you want to talk about moving forward? So we don't have a theme for November that was very intentional because we want to make sure that this time was for collaboration on what's going on in their world. And so, you know, we had quite a few topics posed in the Facebook group. So I picked one today <laughs> just to kind of try it out. And, you know, we landed on coaching for teachers. And so it also kind of related to our theme last month, which was on student behavior. And, you know, some administrators were talking through, you know, coaching teachers on that topic specifically and the challenges with that. And so that was kind of where I posed today was what was the most common challenges you encounter when you're trying to coach teachers. And there were a variety of different responses. So what was your takeaway on this one, Ray? You know, I liked this question because everybody turned to the chat and just started typing. And it's interesting on this, on this, obviously it's a Zoom call, but there is a balance between people participating in the chat and obviously unmuting the comments during this, this question you posed. 
really allowed leaders to reflect on the hurdles that essentially need to be the first thing they think about prior to getting into content. What is going to be any sort of resistance that they're going to, you know, reach? And then how are you going to overcome it to then eventually hopefully reach your long-term objective? A lot of the comments were staff members that don't know that this is a a gap that they need to be reflective on. Um, one of the favorite ones that I loved was just the acknowledgement of time. There's never enough time. So uh, good discussion there. But I think that the, the idea of staff members needing to understand that this is an area that needs to be further developed probably fostered the most conversation. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I was trying to think through, I think, you know, the, the mindset was kind of the, yes. the overarching theme of like, you know, there are certain folks that are like, I want to be better. I'm not perfect. You know, please challenge me <laughs> regardless yeah. of if I'm a first year teacher or a 20 year vet, like I just want to be coached um, at all times. And, and then there's other folks that are like, you know what, I feel like I'm doing a successful job. Don't bother me. <laughs> right. So like, it was kind of one of those things like, okay, let's talk about the ones that we feel like maybe there's some opportunity for growth. You know, how do we kind of change that mind frame? Well, and it's so interesting. We've all, I mean, you and I included, we have all yeah. sat in a professional development that we've been learning about a topic and been like, okay, wait, I already do this really well. Like I yeah. feel confident in this area. So sure. sometimes when we get into professional development, as we're leading it as administrators, we need to remember that we're, we are essentially you know, hitting a sales pitch. Uh, if if we're worried about staff members having that reaction when they first start or first sit down in a training, um, I don't think it's, I think it's a very human reaction to sit down and be like, wait, formative assessments? I'm awesome at this. I do this all the time. Or I've been teaching for 20 years. I know what I'm doing. But, you know, starting with some of those icebreakers, maybe some of those activities that don't have to do with their specific role in education to try and build up that vulnerability, build up that reflection, and then getting into the content might help with some of that mindset uh, mm -hmm. concern that, that came up in today's conversation. Yeah. So once we identified the kind of the issues, the problems that we we're seeing on our campuses and our districts, I wanted to not stop there. We needed to find some support and some resources that we could provide each other in regards to coaching and making sure that we're being there for them, regardless of where they are within their journey. And, you know, it kind of led to the discussion of mentorship mm -hmm. for teachers and the systems that are in place. So, Ray, will you kind of talk through what people had shared in regards to the, what was already established and kind of the goals that they were looking to change um, within their district? Yeah, but you opened up a can of worm with this question. <laughs> you know what you did. Everybody <laughs> has an opinion on mentorship. Did you do yes. that intentionally? Well, it kind of, but you know, it was one of those things where, and this has happened lately. Like one question has, has spawned like 20 minutes of conversation, which I love because it kind of goes into all these different directions. So uh, I know we, we had a lot of discussion around this uh, idea of mentorship, but it is important. I think everyone identified that component of it. And then also realizing like there might be a different way of doing it that might improve what already exists. Yeah, there were so many different sparks of conversations that came from this one question. But initially, we were focusing on new teacher mentorship. How does it happen? When can it happen? And when should it occur? How do, how do you support it? For me, one of the best examples um, and discussion points that came up was the idea of having a, a school building mentor to help with some of those school building specific district specific elements and then having a content specific mentor which can either be located within the building or district maybe is even a virtual content support someone who can push that teacher in instructional practices related to their content i think in a perfect world that really hit all the pieces of, of what was discussed but you know, it, it's comical. A big focus was, yeah, we have mentor programs for the first year or two. And then what? They've learned everything they need to learn about education. This mentorship needs to continue. And, you know, we as as a leadership team need to ensure that we give them in the next step. It's not, oh, you're entering into year three of your teaching career. You're good to go. But, hey, you're entering into your third year of your teaching career. 
here's now the next phase of mentoring. Join a group like, you know, I don't, I don't know, like the Teach Better crew or something like go join something equivalent that can help you be better. But maybe it's not that one on one mentoring anymore. Yeah. Um, there's a, a lot of discussion on this. Yeah, there was a talk talk about creating a culture of vulnerability, which I loved because yes. we expect that teachers should know everything from day one, like college courses just cover <laughs> everything and that they should, you know, know how to, you know, have student management and assess and grade and all these types of things. And that's just not the case. And so, you know, allowing teachers to, to not build that wall up to say, okay, um, you're chipping away at me as a person, you know, I, to have a culture to say, you don't know everything. We, we can't expect that. And so we're going to, you know, provide as much professional development for you, have coaches, have mentors to, to help support you to become the best version of yourself. Yeah. One of the elements I liked as a beginning step to creating that culture of vulnerability with new staff was a suggestion of looking at whatever evaluative tool mm -hmm. you're using and just identifying one area for that teacher to focus on for the year. Yeah. I know a lot of our leadership, you know, that might be tuning in. Uh, do that. But that continues to say, hey, we know we have a lot to work on. We're not going to focus on everything and inundate you with with constant feedback. But let's identify yep. one area to improve this year. And then next year, we'll identify another. And isn't it so wonderful that we'll always have areas to improve in? I mean, I think that that slowly begins that that conversation it needs to be happening all all year round. Well, and the idea of like a growth plan or an improvement plan is such a negative connotation in the past, mm -hmm. like yeah, I know in Texas, like if you were to say, I'm going to put you on a growth plan, that means that's the step that needs to happen prior to you being released. And so yes. like, there's such a, a negative term and it's like, how do we flip that on its head so that you understand, like, this is a plan for you just to be a better teacher or a better administrator or a better instructional coach, whatever it is. And it's not something that, you know, I'm attacking you in your profession to say, I want you to get out of here. <laughs> like that's, that's the worst mind frame ever. So how can we, how can we change that perception and a culture? Yeah. And I think one of the, the simple things that you just modeled right there was defining why something exists in any sort of process. I mean, if you, if you want our, if we want our new teachers to continue to develop in certain areas, we just start early and then be consistent with the existence of these developmental supports. So I love this discussion, especially because everyone who attended this morning's session came from different places around North America. They were in different roles, whether it be a principal, <laughs> superintendent. Yeah. And um, they, they all were approaching supporting mentors differently because they are all in different types of districts, right? Small, large, urban, rural and I think that vantage point really allows our community here to be diverse in their thinking because you don't end up existing in an exclusive bubble and you really yep. can see how other supports exist as well. Well, Ray, I appreciate you being there this morning and adding to the conversation. I'm going to jump into the Facebook group. And I know some folks probably are listening on our podcast. So um, I just want to let you know, facebook.com slash group slash teach better admin, admin mastermind. Uh, that's how you get into the Facebook group. And I'm going to post this a- This is a long link, Josh. Know, you got to fix really that. I Wait, know. Up. Pull Jeff Gargas. Jeff Gargas. Or Jeff Gargas Jeff stinks. At, Jeff at teachbetter.com. Yeah. That's okay. Great. So let's all, all email Jeff. Jeff at teachbetter.com. This is the longest link. Here's what we need to do. If you delete the HTTP, we just www.facebook.com slash groups slash teach better admin mastermind. See you there, friends. <laughs> <laughs> You're pro. All right, Ray. So I'm going to post a, a podcast resource in there that we discussed. So I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to put this video. Oh, wait. The burn, the burnout one. Yeah. The burn bright without burning out. Oh, friends, if you get nothing out of today's recap, go listen to that podcast. It was it was a hot topic discussion. It was. So I'm going to put that resource. I'm going to put this video. I'm going to put the questions that we discussed and then also pose for just future topics. So if you want to add to that conversation, if you want some re additional resources, make sure that you join that Facebook group. And as always, thank you so much for the valuable conversation this morning. If you didn't make it this week, 
We can't wait to see you next Tuesday. And if you haven't, maybe you're just coming across this on YouTube for the first time, you can sign up for free, teachbetter.com slash mastermind. And then we are there every Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern time. And we're here to support in any way possible. Ray, as always, too, if they have any needs, they can reach out to us as the Teach Better team is here to support you. Happy Halloween, my friend. Happy Halloween. I hope everyone has a wonderful day and we look forward to seeing everyone next Tuesday.